Hello and welcome to another episode of Everything Bees by Honey Bee Center. My name is John. Today we're going to talk about pouring packages, uh, specifically kintail packages from northern New Zealand. So this is what the package looks like. They're made out of cardboard and I'm just separating them with a uh, with a hive tool. They're, they're stapled together so you got to force the staples apart. This is the easiest way to do it. It's just, just like that. Pour it off the, pull it off the top. And then I'm checking to see if the cluster is loose. You see how it's loose? They're clustered and they're loose. They're not running inside. The bees aren't running and they're not, the cluster isn't tight. And that way the bees will come up off the bottom board uh, if the cluster is loose and you won't chance uh, freezing them to death if the cluster is too tight or them flying off if the cluster was too loose. So we're just pouring the first package right now. That uh, white piece of paper on top of the package, that, that's just a label, sticky label. So you peel it away and you're exposing the, uh, the can of uh, gelatin sugar. It's a gel, it's not liquid. And uh, there's a staple holding the queen cage. So before you lift the uh, can out, the bees come out of that hole where the can is. Before you lift the can out, you pull the staple off so that the queen cage will come out easily without, uh, without having to jar the, the uh, box. Notice that the colonies have been prepared before the package uh, arrives. So there's a pollen patty on each box. And there's this uh, feeder, the black feeder on the top of the screen, which is uh, half full of sugar syrup. So now the, uh, the uh, feeder can gets removed. And I just scrape the bottom of the can, the bees off the bottom, so that I can put the can down in the frames without damaging any bees. And then the queen cage comes out. See by that wire that you, that, uh, that you take the staple out of. And then I check to make sure the queen is alive, but I can tell with the amount of bees on the cage that she is just fine. And then you just pour the bees like you would a salt and pepper shaker. Turn it upside down and shake it back and forth. And the bees fall into the bottom of the colony. And uh, if this is a critical time of pouring the package. Uh, we, we, want, we want to ensure that the bees start coming up on the frames right away. And so I'm watching for that. So I leave the, uh, the, fr the uh, hole open where the five frames have been removed. And then I'll, I'll put one frame in at a time on each, on each side and I will watch the bees to make sure they're coming up. You can see them on the left hand side of the screen, they're climbing up onto the dark foam right away. And that is a really good sign. And just look through the top and you'll see them climbing. And, he'll, and, and you can see like right, right now they're climbing up and, and if the cluster is too tight and too cold, they don't do that. They just stay right on the bottom and you have a chance of losing them. So now that they're coming up, uh, that you can be rest assured that, that, that those bees will come right up to the top, they'll cover the queen and the colony will survive just fine. So the last number of bees are tapped out of the box. And now it's time to put the queen in. So this this uh, cage is a plastic cage with candy at one end. Most queen cages have candy at one end. I'm just going to pull the staple. The staple is the hanger, so I'm going to pull it out so it's not in the way. And I'm going to pop the candy release open. So that's a piece of plastic. Now the candy is open at the at the uh, for the bees to eat and to release the queen. And uh, all cages. A good idea for all queen cages to go uh, into the colony with the candy up. And, and, and crossways, this cage has to go in crossways. You gotta force it into the comb. Sometimes you have to scrape the comb down to fit the cage. There, I'm just checking that frame at the top to make sure the bees are coming up. And then that, and with the candy up, if there's any attendants inside, then, the, uh, then they, if they die, they won't plug the hole. So the workers can eat the candy, release the queen safely. This is the uh, gel uh, feed. And those bees will go right on top of the queen cage, but be careful not to uh, pour the gel on top of the queen cage. See the gel at the top of the, uh, the, uh, of the feeder can. And so there's a whole whack of bees on top of the queen and now she'll stay warm and protected. And then the rest of that gel syrup can go inside the feeder and the loose bees knocked onto the top of the colony. And then uh, the last thing is the pollen patty, so they can start eating right away. 
And so that colony has a half a feeder of syrup, Paul and Patty, and the queen is in a slow release cage, three day release cage, and that's done and finished. There it is, one poured package. Now we'll just go uh, show you one more uh, from a different angle. Just check in the cluster, make sure that it's loose there. And then we'll speed this up. So remove the frames, five frames out, pour the bees into the bottom. You can see the queen cage has got bees on it on the side there. And the frames go back in loosely while I'm checking to make sure that the bees are coming up on the frames. I see that they are coming up. I just lifted the frame out to look. And now I can put the queen cage back in. There, I see I dug out a little bit of uh, comb there to have the queen cage fit. So now the bees come out of the feeder can on top of the queen cage. The gel goes into the feeder, knock the bees off. And then the pollen patty is applied and uh, in three days I will make sure that the queen has been released and she's laying and then I'll put the pollen patty directly above the, uh, the eggs that she's laid so that those bees can be fed from the pollen patty above them, directly above them. Now we're organizing the yard uh, to pour packages. A uh, package goes on each colony and then we just start by pouring. Just a, the, the, a word of caution, if it's too cold outside and you put the packages on each colony, they will cluster too tightly, especially if it's windy. So uh, if that's the case, I leave them on the truck with a tarp over top so that they stay relatively warm. Always check the cluster to make sure that, uh, that it is loose, but that they are clustered in the package before you start pouring. So sometimes you have to chill the bees if the cluster is uh, broken and the bees are running and sometimes you have to warm them in the truck if the cluster is too tight and it's not loose. There's still a few bees in each uh, package after they've been poured because their claws get stuck in the, in the mesh. Uh, so I put the, the packages underneath the colony for the day and the bees will eventually come out. They might come out the next day as well. This is a different yard pouring packages. And the day these were poured, it was a perfect day, about six Celsius. So the uh, bees were clustered and the clusters were loose. And that's how we can go ahead and, and pre-prep all the colonies. This is what the pallet looks like when it comes from the uh, airport terminal. Uh, those white bags on the bottom, the bottom left arrow is dry ice. It's empty now, but there is, the pallet is packed with 100 kilos of dry ice. And the big right arrow uh, is the net that was, uh, is, was over top of the pallet uh, during shipping. Uh, this is pouring packages on a hot day when the clusters are loose. It's a problem. The bees just take off. They do find colonies, but uh, it's not, you don't get an equal amount of uh, bees per colony. It's not ideal. And then at the end of the day, uh, cleaning off the camera equipment from the bee droppings. It's uh, always a big mess when you're pouring packages. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from Honeybee Center, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.